Hello, and this is Craft Nomad's second podcast. Mm. This is hard. I tried doing it with a script last time, and it did not work. So I have notes, but I'm not scripting it because I don't know why. I've been in theater, and I can do lines fine, but in front of the camera, I couldn't do it. So this time I just have notes. Um, so again, Craft Nomad, and it's episode two. I'm Craft Nomad on most of the social media. So I have a website, www.craftnomad.com. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I love Instagram. But let's just uh, get started. My first episode last time, it's been a while, but a lot of things have been happening. And so I just wanted to, um, to get another episode out and hope that I start connecting with people. <laughs> uh, the last time I had a list of some of my favorite uh, podcasts and I had... Um, I had made a list and wanted you to guess which ones had successful businesses. So today I'm actually, I'm trying to get, I can't get used to QuickTime. Everything is backwards. So I'm trying to get myself over there. So there we go. That's better. That's one of my quilts in the background. See, I'm using the wrong hand. Um, I, and, uh, I'm into a lot of, uh, the fiber arts crafts, so I have in the past done a lot of quilting, a lot of sewing. I was a theatrical, uh, costume designer and, uh, tech, and now I live in Thailand, and I'm just trying to get a fiber arts group going. We're having our third meeting this weekend. Uh, we had one at a restaurant and one at a member's home. And this time we're having a meeting at another member's home. So I think we're just going to rotate it around uh, and see what it's like. So if you live in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and you're looking for a fiber arts group, if you knit, sew, embroider, whatever, any type of fiber art, then look us up on Facebook and join the group and you'll get information about when we meet up. Please do not join the group just to um, post photos. There's another group that's a uh, craft and hobbies page and that is from my friend Jerry and she has it all set up for you to do your posting your pictures and information about events on mine, I will only post things, events that might be specifically interesting to uh, the members about uh, local craft events. Uh, so, for instance, this weekend, there's the Umbrella Festival. And it's not a fiber arts festival technically, but then we stretch it a little bit. Uh, some of the members, in fact, are international, and they have a def different definition of that. And sometimes there's a little confusion, too, because of second languages. Uh, sometimes they don't use that term. So I have one person who thought, fiber art, what is that? Because she only knew fiber, like high fiber diet. But I discovered on the internet recently somebody is knitting instant noodles into fabric as an art project so there you go anything can become art and I guess that's fiber art now I don't know okay so uh, let me give you the information about the podcasts and the different kinds of businesses that have been successful I was surprised after I uh, went over the list I realized that most of them have some type of business going on um, very few people do a podcast for very long without at least getting sponsors or asking for patrons because it's very time-consuming 
and there is expense involved. As you can see, my lighting is not great. I'm sitting on my porch and uh, using my computer and QuickTime. And so, of course, if I continue, I'm going to want, um, you know, better equipment, better microphone. Particularly, uh, I'm going to need a new phone because I'm not happy with the quality of the outdoor pictures. And I want to really be able to show you Thailand. Um, so it, that's just something to know if you're thinking about doing... Um, if you're thinking about doing a podcast, even an audio podcast, eventually you're going to feel a need to have some kind of sponsorship. So here we go with the list. New Stitch a Day has Yarn Craft Academy. You can sign up and get free uh, knitting classes. They're fantastic. Really well done. Um, they break it into segments that are short enough that after the end of the segment, if you need to go back, and look at it again it's very quick you don't have to search you can just watch the segment so each class has maybe 12 segments in it and as I said really well done the photography is great um, Johnny Vasquez actually has been doing that podcast for over five years and he didn't start the business until five years he had more than 5,000 followers when he decided to do this and he went back to his hometown and where he could have the support of his family participating to help with all the camera work and recording um, the new videos for the, the lessons. And so it's a big project, but I am so impressed with the way this happened. Uh, he did a very successful fundraiser uh, to start the business, and he's done two other fundraisers since then, and they're always very successful. Uh, in addition to the Yarn Craft Academy, I should go on to say Pacifica Yarn Company is the main company. They have created a company that's all American yarn. So uh, they started with American wool, and they're now... Um, going to come out with a combination wool and cotton yarn which will be great because if you live in a warm climate like I do you really don't have a lot of use for wool but a wool cotton blend would be so great because um, you you need that elasticity if you have ever worked a garment in 100 percent cotton unless it's a really exceptional product most of the cotton threads um, stretch from the weight. It's just like a pair of jeans, you know, they're really small when you put them on and then they stretch out and that's not so great for a knitted or a crocheted garment. So um, it's Pacifica Yarn Company, Yarn Academy, and the podcast is New Stitch a Day and you can go on there every day and there's a, a lesson for a new stitch because as you know there are thousands of them and then there's always one knit stitch and one crochet so it's not strictly knitting. Uh, Cognitive podcast is a psychology and knitting podcast and she is just a wonderful podcaster. It's all audio but it's so interesting. Um, a little bit of knitting, a little bit of psychology and a little bit about her personal life, about the outdoors, her, her running activity. She's, she's a runner. And uh, then she has annual retreats. So the annual retreats, they meant to be doing some uh, knitting workshops, some yoga, and some other kind of uh, psychology workshops. Those have been going on for about five years now. Um, the Knit More Girls is another, another audio podcast. It's one of my favorites. And uh, they have no ambition to do video at all, but they, they know how to do a really interesting audio podcast. And they have very successful sponsors. They started with one or two sponsors. Now I think they have uh, about five or so different sponsors each week. And so that's enabled them to keep it up for a long time and to keep the, the equipment up to date and do what they need to do to really put out a good podcast.
uh, Cape Nest Collective is a podcast from Scotland. I love this podcast. And um, she's also been doing it for a number of years. And she does have an Etsy shop. And uh, she has also a sponsor that is a home business, an energy business, which she and her husband run. Um, the Knit Girls, G-I-R-R-L-S, sponsors an annual retreat. It's called SSK, short for Super Summer Knit Along. And it's, it's done every year in Nashville. It's a smaller retreat, and uh, it's big enough to have vendors, but not, not huge. And everybody who goes to that seems to really like it because it's a very friendly atmosphere. Knitting Pipeline. Um, this is a lady who lives in Illinois, my uh, original home state. And... Uh, She's just a lovely woman, very knowledgeable about knitting, and uh, she does some designing, but she started retreats a few years back just in her hometown, and the first couple of years, people, um, some of them uh, slept on the floor in the rec room of the church because it's a small town and they didn't have a lot of motel space. But they've continued to have that every year, and now it's expanded, and she also does a retreat uh, in New England. And if anybody has more information about that, please be sure and um, just put some notes uh, under the podcast or on one of the, the uh, social media spots about her, because uh, she's just a wonderful podcaster. And I don't know a lot about the retreats, uh, but they, they seem to have been very successful. Another one I really like is the Fat Squirrel Speaks. And uh, she is also a Midwesterner. She lives in Indiana. Um, if you want a fun podcast, someone who has a great personality and is so funny, uh, she's the one to watch. And she just has an Etsy shop. She doesn't have sponsors, but uh, she has her own Etsy shop, and she will show the products at the end of the podcast. So uh, if you watch her podcast and you like what she does and you like her products, please do order bags from her because she's great. Um, Craft Lit, another one that's been going on more than seven years now. This is a unique podcast. In the beginning, I don't think there was anybody else who did this. It's a knitting literature podcast. And it's wonderful because she's realized that a lot of the people who are knitters are also very avid readers. So for years now, she's been doing a podcast that has a little bit of news about knitting and it has um, maybe some personal news if there's something really interesting that's going on at home. She's recently started a live chat with another podcaster that happens once a week. Um, but the main part of the cast, podcast is um, audio podcasts. So the idea is that you can listen to the classic literature while you're knitting and it's really great. She has a theater background, and she's made a lot of wonderful connections. So the readers are fabulous. And I prefer listening to the audio podcasts of books from her rather than um, going on one of the commercial sites and ordering because you don't get a chance to sample them. And you don't know whether you're going to like the, the person who's reading or not, and that makes a big difference if you're going to listen to an audio podcast. The other plus is um, she is a former teacher. Uh, she's still teaching in other areas, but she taught literature for many years, and she does all the research for you. She has all kinds of inf interesting information about the time periods and um, the things that you might not know otherwise, and you don't have to look them up. It's great. Also, great discussion about the chapters. Uh, people call in or write in uh, things about the chapters, and sometimes someone will offer additional information as well. Um, 
let's go to the next thing. Those are all of the podcasts that I know about that are um, that have a business. I may have missed some of the others. There were only a couple others on the list that I didn't find any business, but most of them will have patrons. So if you can and if you enjoy a podcast, please do uh, join as a member uh, because that helps them to keep, keep their podcast going. I wanted to talk about knitting progress because I didn't do that last time. So um, I, if any of you know me from Ravelry, you've probably seen that I started the Tuscany Lace Tunic. And I worked on that for a long time, but um, I found that it took really a lot of concentration because it's a diamond lace pattern and the repeat is 50 rows long. So um, I never was able to memorize the pattern. I had to sit with the, the chart in front of me every time. And in the middle of this, uh, I moved to Thailand, and then there were a lot of things going on with getting things set, set up with immigration and that kind of thing. Um, and also trying to see if I could get a business started in Thailand. So I finally I put that aside, and I needed something to work on where I could do it without, you know, to relax, but not too much thinking. So... I decided to just do a ribbed tunic because I haven't had one of those for a long time and I wanted to design something that was perfectly fitted and um, in a cotton blend fabric. So I've been working on that and actually let me just grab things really quickly. Sorry, I had to move things so many times to get set up that I didn't still have it right. This is the best light that I can get. I have uh, a bay window on the porch, but uh, the lighting inside isn't that great. It's north light, which is great if I wanted to stand on the porch and paint, but I don't anymore. So uh, let me just show you the progress on this. Um, Some people do like to see the bags, so this is a bag I got in Thailand, and I would like to start producing these because it's a, a unique design. It sits really flat, and yet it has a small pocket on the inside and the outside that are perfect for your stitch gauge. Um, this is a cotton and linen blend that I bought a number of years back. And now I'm getting all my stitch markers caught on things. But um, what I did was I took just a basic pattern from Ann Bud's book and I added ribs and then um, I've added some increases in the bust line. As, as you can see, I'm learning um, where to put the the increases, but I haven't learned exactly how to hide them yet. So I'm full busted. Maybe it's not going to show because it'll be hidden, but uh, that's a project I need to work on. Um, if anyone has suggestions how you increase and make it more or less invisible uh, when it's got to be in the center, please let me know. Uh, I could have added the uh, increases on the sides, but I don't like that because if you really are full busted and you want something to fit properly, if you add it on the outside, it makes it bigger, but it just makes the armholes do really strange things. So um, that's what I'm working on right now. I also do some sewing and... Um, I have been looking at fabric in Thailand and I want to show you the fabric because one of the things that I love about living here is that they still make fabric here. There was a uh, 
Silk Festival um, last summer where all the different uh, mills that make the silk, and a lot of them are still, um, you know, hand looms, but all the, the different designers and silk manufacturers came, and they put on the most fabulous show. It was so professional. Um, so it was like getting a musical variety show, and when they showed you how to wrap the traditional tie skirt with one long piece of fabric, they didn't just stand there and say, this is how you do it. There was a dance with beautiful music. Um, it was wonderful. So um, I, I really like to see them promoting that um, fiber art culture because that's something that if you have a, a craft like that in your culture, you, you don't want it to go away. And that's one of the reasons I'm so enthusiastic about sewing and knitting and crochet because it's a really important part of our culture. It's not the high arts, but the crafts are the things that we live with every day. So this is the fabric that I got. This is a cotton fabric, um, and this is a Hmong tribe fabric. Uh, the Hmongs live in the mountains. We're in northern Thailand, so we have tribes that live also in Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. And the Hmongs um, do live in Vietnam and, I believe, Cambodia. This is an indigo print, and it's just beautiful. So I have about uh, six yards, but as you can see, it's only about 16 inches wide. So I also bought um, some... I was looking for plain indigo, like this. This was the closest I could come. So I'm going to, I'm in the process of designing something that will incorporate both. If I find a plain indigo uh, before I finish that project, that will be fine, and I'll um, probably do a paneled skirt with that. So um, that's all that I'm working on right now. Uh, I just bought a sewing machine. I haven't had a sewing machine since I lived in, in Korea uh, three or four years ago. And I wanted to get started sewing, but unfortunately, you can see the sewing machine behind me. I bought this about a week ago, and it already doesn't work, and I don't speak Thai. So that's a sad thing. And any of you, if you're local and you are familiar with the shops or you know somebody who can communicate with them, it would be great because I don't know what I can do. It's, it's a full-size machine and it's on a table. I may have to take a tuk-tuk, one of the little motor cars, uh, with just the machine and try to show them the problems. But it really needs to be explained. I think... Maybe it needed a tune-up, or maybe um, the parts are just so worn out that even when you tune it up, it doesn't stay because it, the needle is hitting um, the take-up hook underneath. So it's not something I can adjust just with tension. Anyway, so sad. Let's go on to the next thing. Um, next weekend... There's something going on called the Umbrella Festival, and I talked about that earlier. So I hope to have some photos for you. Um, that's one of the reasons that I'm I'm hoping to um, to get a new phone soon because uh, what happens is like when we went to the mountains last month, I took a lot of pictures at the first in the morning, and then by afternoon, my uh, phone was dead. And even though I had a charger with me, it took too long to recharge. So I was still without any way to take pictures. So I missed half of the, the good shots. Um, so I'm working on that. I may ask people to sponsor, but I don't think it's fair right at this time because um, I'm just learning this process. And I hope, I really hope that eventually this will be a wonderful podcast. I hope it's still interesting to you. But I want to get better and better with the quality. 
uh, I am looking for content writing positions, so that's going to be what I use to sponsor this, buy a new sewing machine, all that kind of thing. So that's it for the for today. If you're in Thailand and you come to Chiang Mai, uh, please contact me, and I would love to get together with you. If you have feedback or information, I would love to have uh, lots of comments because then I know that people are watching and that's why I'm doing it. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you maybe once or twice a, a month in the beginning. Have a great day. Bye-bye.